Just performing one of my many duties as a super fan, and that is sending out fan mail. Special delivery! Ooh. See? Ta da! Ooh, shiny. Yeah. It's important for my favorite people to know that they're my favorite people. That's part of kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Dear Kyle, I like your smile. You can shoot basketballs a quarter mile. <laughs> Let someone else rebound every once in a while. Your biggest fan. But don't get me wrong. I'm not just a fan of famous athletes. I'm fans of all kinds of people. Dear mom, you're the bomb. You're like the coolest.com. You make me want to shake a pom-pom. <laughs> Your biggest fan, hey. Dear sis. Mm. Uh... <sighs> okay. Well, I'll tell you this. The annoying way you chew is something I don't miss. And your taste in music makes me want to hiss. Your sis. Hey. 
Did you ever notice that it's harder to be kind to the people that you're closest to? Well, as you'll see in today's story, sometimes the people we're closest to are the people who need our kindness the most. I should probably rewrite this card to my sister. <sighs> yeah. See you in a bit. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley. Let's see. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food! Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid, I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. 
Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now, Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son, Obed, had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David, King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem, who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. A lot of kindness was being shown in Ruth's story. Boaz was kind to Ruth, Ruth was kind to Naomi, and through them, God was kind to all of us. Did you know Ruth was the great, 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 several great Slater, great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? I am a huge fan of Ruth. <laughs> Dear Ruth, here's the truth. I've been a big fan ever since my youth. <laughs> Your biggest fan, Haley. Kindness matters, especially when it comes to the people we're closest to, like our family and friends. But the people we're closest to are the people who can also get on our nerves, right? So we're not always kind to them. Or sometimes we assume those people know how we feel about them, so we never tell them. But we shouldn't assume. We should tell people when we care about them. Or send them a letter! Special delivery! To Ruth! And we should be kind to our friends and family, even when they get on our nerves, because God can use our kindness to do amazing things in their world. So, here's the one thing to remember today. Be kind to your family and friends. Don't let your favorite people forget they're your favorite people. Dear sis, listen to this. If I didn't say I love you, it'd be a miss. Come on over sometime and we'll reminisce. Your sis, Haley. <laughs> yeah, there. Well, that's a much kinder card to someone who will be my sister for my entire life. <laughs> love you, sis. Yay. See you next time.